Hi to all my stitching friends and subscribers. Um, it's nice to be back again to do a little bit of stitching with you and if this is your first time watching, welcome. This morning I'm going to be working on a, a chart called London. So this is typically a scenery of some different um, landmarks and famous buildings in London, in the UK. And the chart is by Thea Governor, I'm not sure I pronounced that correctly, but I believe, or so I've been told, it's a Dutch company. And it's a beautiful chart. It's um, on 18 count Ida fabric, I believe. And it's actually a really beautiful stitch and a very quick stitch. I find that whilst I'm working on this one, it's um, the progress is showing through relatively quickly. And I've started right in the center of the pattern, somewhere about here, and I've worked my way around and now I'm just about to finish the steeple. Is it called a steeple? That's a word I haven't heard for a while. Um, up here on this cathedral. Um, and there is a lot of backstitch, but I've actually decided to do the backstitch as I go along because I didn't want to be lumbered with a whole chart full of backstitch at the end when I'd finished all the cross stitch. So I think that for me was a good idea because I'm not that keen on the back stitch and I find it quite hard to follow where I'm actually stitching. Um, you have to concentrate quite a bit, especially around this area here where your back stitch is actually very similar color to the stitches you've already done. So it's quite difficult to differentiate. But anyway, let's get started. So this morning I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to finish this section here. I've, some of this back stitch here is actually uh, the metallic thread. Now I haven't used metallic thread that often, but I know that it's it's quite sort of stiff and it's not as soft, obviously, and pliable as the um, the other floss. But you know, it's something you have to kind of get used to. And I'm not actually sure, to be honest whether some of these actual cross stitches in metallic are meant to be done with two threads or one thread. However, I'm going to just go in with the one thread because it does say on the chart that back stitch is one thread. However, the, the stitches themselves in metallic, I'm not sure. So I'm going to go with just the one thread like I'm doing with everything else is all one thread. So why would it be different? I don't know. I was just guessing but let's see I'm going to try and, and finish off so I've got a few more gold stitches here to do and a few more up the top here and I'm just going to see how that works out for me so hopefully you've got a good view of this chart and I like to keep my tension really tight when I'm working on this one so this has been um, a piece that I chose because I've actually been to London a few times and I lived not too far outside London. Um, so I'm quite familiar with the culture and it's, it's just a little bit nostalgic for me now that I'm living in Scotland. And I can't find my starting point, so where am I? Okay, it's further up here. It's not that far down. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine stitches to complete here I think yeah that should have been I think I did an extra stitch where I shouldn't have done an extra stitch of a different color but that's okay I'm not sure the actual crosses in metallic are going to show through as much as I'd like but I don't want them to stand out wrongly if I do two strands there it's come out of the needle again so as I said, this metallic stuff is particularly tricky and I'm not denying it. So you do kind of have to grip the needle well. I've got quite a big eye on this needle. So it's not surprising that it's a little bit dodgy. No, I think I've started in the wrong place. Let's go again. I'm sure I will get there eventually. And I've done the tiniest, tiniest knot at the back with this thread. So 
so let's get started. Now, I'm up here, actually. Not down there, I'm up here. I seem to have forgotten um, how to use this stuff. Not something I use very frequently. But I think once you get into the rhythm of it, it can turn out to be quite smooth. It's just that initial faffing around with the thread and getting your fingertips used to how you're working it. Now it's easy if I count the stitches so I know exactly how many I have to do because there's so few stitches on this area. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I've done two. This is relatively simple. And there is also some back stitching to be done in the gold on here. Again, it's come out of my needle, so I'm gonna have to try and find a needle that has a smaller eye. So I've got a whole pack of needles right here beside me, so that's really useful because sometimes I can swap them out for different sizes depending on how I'm working and what floss I'm using and the size of the holes on the fabric. Sometimes I just switch them around a little bit to see which one works best. Yeah, I'm thinking that the one strand in gold here is actually okay. I don't think, oh, it's happened again. How do you keep this metallic thread from staying on the needle? Any tips, please put it in the comments below. <laughs> and I have to grip the end of the needle now so that it doesn't slide out. It's very slippery stuff, extremely slippery. I, I wouldn't do an entire piece on this metallic thread, that's for certain. So it's Friday and I'm looking forward to the weekend. Are you doing anything special this weekend? I've just come back from my trip um, last week, so I'm quite happy to have a nice, quiet and relaxing and restful weekend, to be honest, because there's been a lot of kind of touring and traveling around. Um, so now my legs just want to sit down <laughs> and rest and do not much. So, it's going to be a nice stitchy weekend for me and I'm going to catch up on a few things at home, a little bit of reading because I love my books. I've got a whole pile of books beside my bed that I need to get through and they're just calling me. But I'm always just so busy doing my stitchy stuff. But that's okay because we have time, we have time for everything. And do you know what I'm really pleased about getting? This top of this building finished and knowing that I don't have to come back to it and do any more backstitch, I think that's the best part for me. I like to finish something, a section. I've noticed that about myself. I like to finish a section and move on. I don't like to leave things half done. Maybe that's just a throw back to my, my days when I worked as a secretary and I was so organized and everything had to be just so. And I was careful, not missing appointments, having a diary, all that kind of stuff kind of imprints into your brain and turns you into some kind of control freak, I don't know. But um, I like things to be nicely completed and I do take pride in how my cross stitch patterns look. So as far as I can see, I'm going into the right holes. And I've actually lost my thread for the third time now out of this needle, even though I chose a smaller eye. Okay, where am I at? So there's one stitch there. Oh, so this is going to be do, 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 one. Basically fill in the spaces that I have here. And I think there's one up here. 
not going too badly. So I do understand why people say metallic thread is a tricky business because I seem to forget how tricky it is until I actually come to use it and then I remember. And then I'm kind of grateful that I don't use it all the time. <laughs> So a nice stitchy quiet weekend, cozying up on my couch, swapping around my whips, trying to get a little progress done on each of them. I think that's going to be my relaxing weekend. And I am thinking about cross stitch patterns that I might do for Halloween or for Christmas. I'm kind of probably going to dig some out that I haven't done for a while and work a little bit on those because I like working on say some of my Halloween themed patterns because they kind of give that you know they lend that atmosphere when you are working on them so it's good fun and um, oh and also I want to mention that if you're interested in doing a stitch along of any kind you can um, go into my Discord link, which is in the description below. And I have a room called Stitch Along Ideas. And you can post any ideas for Stitch Alongs for the end of this year. Um, a group of, of people, a group of stitchers and myself are all in there discussing what sort of stuff, you know, what sort of patterns we like and different things and, and putting up images of stuff that we like and um, as well as posting progress of what we're currently doing it's also really fun to think ahead at stuff that we might do or that we could do together so yeah if you if you like stitch alongs hit that link in the description and you'll get instant happiness lots of nice people in there will greet you and say hello now this part here, I'm doing a cross up here. Eek, and oh, the metallic's just that little bit tiny to see. Shiny and tiny, let's see, one, two. I don't want to do a bigger cross than I should. Okay, I think I'm okay. It's hard to know which way to go with the cross. Up, down, left, right. So there's two on each side, two stitches on left, two stitches on the right, two stitches above, then you've got the center point, and I don't want my thread to come out again. This is really going to finish off this part of this building really well. It does look like such a delicate and intricate piece. It's not as difficult as it looks, to be honest, not at all. So I do recommend it if you like the look of these pretty intricate pieces. It's not difficult at all, I don't think. The only thing, like I said, I found was when the back stitch was the same color as the stitches beneath. Uh, it can play a little bit with your eyes, and be a little bit difficult to see, but apart from that, it's fairly straightforward back stitch. And my tip is always to do it as you go along, making sure that you've done enough of the crosses underneath that your backstitch will cover them. You know, don't just leave gaps and backstitch over gaps because then you'll get into a bit of a mess when you come to do that stitch later and you've already got some backstitch on top of it. So that's one, two, I think I've made a mistake now. One, that should be one, two, three, no, it's fine. I'm just, I'm, you know what, I'm just panicking and I can't find my pencil to mark off my chart, but never mind, there isn't a lot of stitches here. I don't want to get into a panic, so that's one stitch there, and then it's one, two, and the third one. Yeah, that's okay. Anyway, even if I have made a mistake here, it's not a lot of thing, a lot of stitches to frog. I just want this cross to be even on all sides. So that's one, two. 
goodness me, how can one little tiny cross get so confusing? Um, that looks even to me, so now I'm going to do another two stitches on the top. And that completes my building. And it's looking very regal and very historic. And very beautiful, if I might say. Oof, I think I have made a mistake. Because <laughs> the side of this cross looks longer than this side. Okay. One, two, three. I have made a mistake. But I wonder if I just do an extra cross there and an extra cross there. Decisions, decisions. I've got four across. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to do an extra cross. Okay, don't tell anyone. I'm going to do an extra cross at the top and on the left and see if I can live with that. If not, I can always come back later and frog it. So I did three on that side. Goodness me, how can this be? How can one little cross actually know that's not going to work? Because it's going to look shorter at the bottom. Oh, for the love of... Let's go and frog it. But now I think I have to actually frog this whole row. Because... That's the thing with frogging. When you get to make a mistake so far back, well, not so far in this case, but far back enough that you have to unpick loads of stitches just to get to your bad cross. That's when you kind of wish you'd taken up a different hobby <laughs> for at least two minutes or the time that you're frogging. Oh, that one's... Then you have to figure out which direction you need to frog. Is it the top leg here or the top leg there? Eek, that's not sounding good. Okay. Oh, so let's try again. And then I'll probably find out that um, I didn't make a mistake after all. Has that ever happened to you? that you've started frogging and you frogged a whole load and then you've realized that you, there wasn't a mistake at all. But I do think that I had done an extra cross on this side. So this thread does not want to stay on my needle. Okay, let's take it back a step, deep breath, we can do this, we can do this. It's not rocket science. Let's just keep hold of that thread. I don't think I had as much trouble with this metallic when I was doing the back stitch, to be honest. I think it's the actual squares where it's kind of so flimsy and it pops out of the hole so easily. I'm not exactly singing the graces very well of this metallic stuff, to be honest. Okay, so two down, two right, two crosses left. I think that will make more sense. And, oh! Turn the camera up a little bit so you can see a little bit higher and it's come out again. I'm glad that I now have only two stitches to go because I've already got a little bit tired of this thread. So it would have to be done in small 
little spurts if there was a lot of this to do. Again, it's come out. I'm now thinking maybe I should just go back to bed and forget all about this venture with the metallics. And the other thing is the more you handle it, the more weird it starts to get, it starts fuzzing and pieces of it start peeling off. It really has got a life of its own. Now it's gone into a weird shape and doesn't want to stretch out just on the last couple of stitches. <laughs> but I am determined to get this cross done. And it sounds so sort of coarse when it's going through the fabric, like it's kind of ripping or something. Yay, I've done it. Now I'm just going to secure it at the back and I don't really care how it secures as long as it's secure. It doesn't come out. Okay, that looks okay. Not the best secured. I'm going to have to go around and re-thread it again later. So there we have it. There's my metallic cross small and sweet and simple doesn't actually look that bad does it and there's more metallic thread backstitch going along there and you know what they actually give you quite a lot of this stuff um, I've had to peel away some of these threads and I have difficulty with that if you look at this thread here when you actually get one and you try to peel it it's kind of buckling up here or something it's not nice smooth the way I take a thread out of my skein is I just pull one and slowly bring the rest down and I have to do this really really slowly with the metallic because look how it goes and it's starting to get a little bit knotted although it does do it if you go really slowly there, and I've got one thread out, and then I just have to carefully smooth this one out. But it's really, really faffy. I'm not denying it. It's really faffy. And I can see why it's not the favourite when it comes to cross-stitching. So I'm actually not going to do the, um, the rest of that back stitch right now, because just because I think I need a cup of tea before I attempt it again. Um, but I'm glad that I've managed to get that little cross finished, even after those few mishaps. And, you know, looking at it closely, it's not as impressive, but when you look at this from a distance, it really, really is an impressive piece. And I can just imagine the whole scene would be really delightful to look at, especially when it's up on the wall. It, it looks just, I don't know, it's just like so 3D like. And I'm not sure how they achieved that, but I think the backstitch makes a huge difference to how this is perceived and how it's got that kind of like 3D appearance. It's just pretty amazing. So yeah, you know, no pain, no gain like they say. And now it's done. So after even after a little bit of messing around, I was still able to persevere and get that metallic bit done up there. So next for me, because I've started in the middle, is working outwards. I'm trying to fulfill a whole page and then, so I don't need to bother with that page anymore. So basically, I've got my page, which I can quickly show you here, and I've done the whole bit in the middle. So I will do this bit on the side and I'll do that little bit on the side and then I will move to another page. Um, and either continue on with the right building or with the left building so that if I if I basically if I complete a whole page I just eliminate that page and I can move to the next one um, and I think that means that I'll have less pages to be going backwards and forwards with 
I'll just do them completely and move on. So I'm assuming that because if I'm doing all the top, I'll end up finishing all the top of the chart and then I'll probably move down to finishing all of the bottom of the chart. So that's me done for the moment. I need a break <laughs> even after that little small stitching session that I had just there. So thank you for watching. It's been wonderful again to connect with you all and I'll be back again with another stitch with me very soon. And don't forget if you're interested in connecting with us in our little community, just um, the link is down uh, below in the description. And so let me know what you're working on now. Have you finished something? Are you starting something new? Um, it's always nice to find out what other people are stitching and how they're getting on with it. So any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll catch up with you very soon. Take care.